thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tracy and this is a DIY upcycling channel. And today I'm going to upcycle this. I got this little lounge suit at Goodwill. It's oversized, has a little bit of stretch, which is no one's favorite fabric to work with, but I want to turn it into something I want to live in and throw on whenever it's clean. And I want to turn it into sort of a vintage bloomers and bed jacket with a little bit of a twist. Now I collected velvet in the winter when I met the thrift store. It's really hard for me to pass up, especially crushed velvet. Crushed velvet is more textural and shiny. So I have this dress that will be turned into ruffles to give me the look I'm looking for. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of cut this up. Now the pants, I am going to cut 20 inches up from the bottom. When I'm wearing this, when it's cut, it sh if I calculated correctly, it should hit just below my kneecap. Okay, so I just folded my pants in half and lined everything up nicely and I'm going to measure up 20 inches. Now that seems like a lot, right? But these are oversized and they have a high rise and a drop crotch because they're oversized. So they'll be baggy and 20 inches should be just right. Now for the top, I'm cutting 14 inches off the bottom. I'll have a big ruffle to add and eight inches off of the sleeves. So now I basically have some little shorty pants and a little crop top. So now I want to add a flared ruffle at the bottom of these to create my bloomer. And what I'm going to do, I need to add 10 inches to the bottom of the pants. And so what I'm going to do is go to this dress and it's pretty flared at the bottom. So this will be my ruffle. It's already hemmed, so I won't have to do any hemming. I'm going to cut 10 and a half inches, I'm giving myself half an inch for seam allowance off the bottom of this dress. Now here's the bottom of the dress. And now I'm just going to cut it in half basically. Cut here and cut here because I need, need two pieces for my legs. Now I'm going to take each of those two pieces, I'm going to fold them right sides together, line up the edges, and go to my machine and sew it together with my largest zigzag stitch right down the side. I always start sewing at the bottom of the ruffle where the hem is because it's a lot easier to snip off the top than it is the bottom in case there's some misalignment. Okay, so now I have my two ruffles sewn together and I want to attach them to the pants. And I pinned this one already and what I did was turn that velvet ruffle inside out and now I'm going to take the pant leg and slide it in through the bottom. This is the hemmed end. Slide it in through the bottom and I'm going to line it up right here. Now the opening of this ruffle is longer than the pant leg. So that will give us room to make some pleats. But what I do is I'll take one end of the ruffle and I'll pin it to one end, the side of the pant leg. And then I'll come to the other side, here's the pant leg, here's the other side of the ruffle, and I'm going to pin this to this. Now, 
I am going to find the center between these two pins of my pant leg, which is about here, and the center of my ruffle, which is about here, and I'm going to pin those together. Now, between these two pins, find the center here, the center here, and pin those together. And we just keep getting smaller and smaller until we're comfortable enough to take that to the sewing machine and sew it. Okay, I have both pant legs pinned. Now I'm just going to take it to my machine and slip the middle in over my machine here. And with a quarter inch seam allowance and my largest zigzag stitch, I'm just going to sew this all together. And the pleats, I usually, it doesn't matter which way you push them, but I usually stick to one direction and go all the way around. Now I have one leg done. When I'm done sewing, I like to trim it close to that zigzag stitch just to make it look more tidy. Now I'm just going to press that seam that I just made. Now you might want to cover yours with a tea towel. If you're not sure of the fabric content or if it's sensitive to heat, mine's polyester and it irons just fine. Okay, how cute are these? And how easy was that? All right, so these are done for now. And I may add a little embellishment later, I may not. I want to get the top done first and then kind of look at it together and see if it needs something or what it might need. Okay, so now I want to work on the top. I will be adding a big ruffle at the bottom and a big ruffle at the sleeve. But first I want to do some embellishing, do some applique, and it's a lot easier to do it now than when I have all that other extra fabric on there. Okay. So I'm hiding the top from you. It's behind me. I've been working on it and my plan was to have whimsical floral applique on it. And I have two dresses with florals. I buy tops and dresses and things just for the florals. And I'm not liking any of it. So I'm going to show you. Here's flowers from the first dress. I mean... I don't know, in the camera, it kind of looks colorful and whimsical in real life. I don't know, it kind of looks messy. Let me show you the other flowers. Okay, so I've got these big flowers. I don't know. I think they're too much, too big and bright and all of that. I threw or I got these shoes off of eBay to wear with this outfit. So I thought floral applique would be fun, these fun embroidered mules, but I think what I'm going to do is just do the ruffles on the sleeves and on the bottom. And I have a patch, I'll show you. Okay, I have this really cool Frida Kahlo patch that I got on Amazon. I'll put the link to that in my description. But I think what I'll do after I do the ruffles, I'll just put that right in the back and leave it as is. Okay, well, I just watched a couple of the clips back that I just did. I sound really Eeyore-ish and kind of down. I'm just contemplating, that's kind of how I get serious. Anyway, I am going to make the bottom ruffle of the top and I want it eight inches tall, but I'm going to cut it nine and a half inches tall, give me room for a hem and seam allowance. So I'm going back to that dress and along the bottom 
I'm going to cut off a row that's nine and a half. And then when I get that cut off, I'm going up again another nine and a half, and I'll have to piece those two strips together. Okay, now I have those two strips cut out. I am just going to put them right sides together at one end. It doesn't really matter which end. And sew it together so I have one big long strip. I'm going to use straight or a straight stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So I have this all sewn together. This will be my bottom ruffle. Now this is 92 inches long and the distance around the bottom of my shirt is 55 inches. Typically I like to double that number, but it's okay. I'm just working with what I have and this will give me some cute ruffles. Now I'm going to hem the bottom. There are lots of different ways to hem. I like doing this way because there's no measuring, no pinning, just sewing, but it does require three long rows of stitching. So my first row, I will use a straight stitch, put it in my machine, and the edge here, I'll line it up against the side of my presser foot, which brings the stitching in a quarter of an inch. Now I'm doing this with my velvet side down. Okay, so now my guide stitch is done. Now I'm going to fold this over like this to where I can barely just see that stitch I made. I want to see it, but barely. And I will go along here again with my straight stitch. Now, if you want to do this sort of hem, give yourself an inch, whatever measurement you get say eight inch ruffle, add an inch, cause this takes up about an inch. Now my second row is all done. I'm going to fold it over one more time to where I can just barely see that stitch line and I'm going to sew it closed. Now I have that all hemmed and now I want to lay it back out and put right sides together and sew the end shut. Okay, I'm going to take it back to my machine. I won't pin this or anything. I'll start down at the bottom. I'll use a zigzag stitch and just close it up and make like a big circle. Okay. So this is what we have now, and I want to add it to the bottom of the shirt. Now I'm going to sew this on just like I did the pant leg ruffle. I have this right side out, this inside out, going to bring the shirt, this is upside down, the hem is right here. I'm going to bring the shirt through the ruffle, line up the sides now if you missed how to do this i'll put the time stamp of how i did the pant leg it'll explain how to do this one as well I'll put that up in the left hand corner okay now I have my ruffle all pinned on and I'm just going to sew it. I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to use a straight stitch because this is a lot of sewing. I don't really want to do a zigzag and use a ton of thread if I don't have to. I think a straight stitch will be just fine. that ruffle and I pressed the seam we just made and then I pressed the hem that we made earlier and now I want to do the sleeves okay 
to make the ruffle for the sleeves. Remember when we originally cut this top off and cropped it? Well, this is the bottom part of it. I'm just going to cut this into two pieces and there will be one for each arm. Now I want my ruffle eight inches tall. So I'm cutting eight and a half inches to give me room for seam allowance. Now I'm going to take both of these to my sewing machine, put the ends together, right sides together, and just do a straight stitch quarter inch seam allowance on both. Now I have two pieces that look like this. And now I'm going to attach them, pin them, just like I did the legs, just like I did the bottom of the top. So pretty. That's what the sleeves look like. And now I just want to do the patch on the back. Okay, I'm pinning my Frida patch right there, low enough so that when my hair, my hair won't cover it too much. And now I'm just going to get it sewn on. There's embroidery, black embroidery around the edge. So I'm going to use my second to smallest zigzag stitch, black thread, and just try to stay on that border and get that sewn on. Okay, I have the sewing all done. Now, even though it didn't quite turn out like I envisioned with the applique and everything, I'm thinking I have so many ornate dusters and jackets and things that it might be nice to have kind of a plain pattern, cute outfit to wear with. So that could be a happy accident. So I'm gonna go put it on and show you what it looks like. On a real body, I have her so, she's so tiny, I have this completely pinned over. It's hard to really see what it looks like, but I'll show you. Okay, here is all done. Super cozy and fun. Wouldn't this be gorgeous Christmas morning? I love it. And I have so many things to go with it. And if you want to stick around, I'll show you. So I have... These are all tutorials, amulet necklaces. Now I was worried about this being plain, but man, you can jazz it up so many different ways. That's cute. And I have this other one. They both would work with that. And I have these collage brooches. They both would work with that. How fun. But best of all, our purses. I just pulled four and I have more that would actually work with it. So these are all tutorials and I'll put the link down in my description. I have this bag. Wouldn't that be cute? Okay. And Burgundy must be my color because I feel like I have so much that would go with this outfit. Now this really jazzes up the outfit. How cute is that? Wait, I'm going to go look in the mirror. Okay. And then this backpack made out of vintage tapestry. That would be super cute. All right, and then my most recent bag, I'll put the link to all these in my description. Now it's, maybe this is too matchy-matchy, but this is also burgundy velvet. What a luscious outfit. Okay, I'll bring it in and let you see a little bit more of the details, and I thank you so, so much for watching.